Sometimes you and I are overwhelmed with the goodness of God and every impulse we have is to give thanks to God for some obviously great thing. But sometimes life is hard and raw and heartbreaking and we move toward gratitude for one reason only, because we know God expects it, because God commands it. And so we give him thanks even when we have to admit our hearts are not fully in it. John Henry Jowett, a British preacher, said, gratitude is a vaccine, an antitoxin, an antiseptic. What did he mean by that? He means that gratitude is protection and medication for your soul. The more grateful you are, the healthier your soul is. Gratitude makes you well in your spirit even when your body isn't well, even when your finances are not well, even when your relationships are not well. It allows you to sing, it is well with my soul. David wrote, God, you turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth, that's mourning clothes, and you clothed me with joy that my heart may sing to you and not be silent. Oh, Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. If you know anything about David, you know he had lots of pain and loss and difficulty in his life. And David did not say, God, you altered all my circumstances, and I'm so thankful for that. He didn't say that God changed everything from unfavorable to favorable. He said that God changed him and replaced his mourning and his weeping with dancing and joy. God gave him joy even in his sorrow, and he thanked God for it. I have a little assignment for you that is probably going to feel awkward if it is not a practice of yours. But as you face challenges, like later today, maybe in the parking lot, you're trying to get out of here with the traffic, at home, at work, in your emotions, with your health, in your finances, in your relationships... I just want to challenge you to pause as you are contemplating those difficulties, and I want to challenge you to breathe a three-word prayer. Maybe you just have to think it because you're in the presence of other people and you don't want to weird them out, but just pray, thank you, Lord. Even when you're having trouble seeing the thing for which you should be thankful, even when you don't know how God is going to work it out, just proactively thank him. Thank you, Lord. Why? Well, I don't want you to disconnect from reality. I don't want you to be someone who doesn't know when things are difficult. I want you to connect with the reality that you have a father in heaven who never ignores you, who never sleeps and forget about you, who never forsakes you, who never will stop giving you what you need. So thank him for it even when you're having trouble feeling thankful. When things look grim, look for something for which to be thankful. And if you can't find it, thank God that he continues loving you and caring for you and being patient with you while you learn how to give thanks in all circumstances. Paul wrote to the Philippians from prison. And if I had been writing that letter from a prison cell being treated unjustly, I would have been tempted to begin my letter by saying, you won't believe what I am having to deal with. But Paul began his letter to the Philippians from prison and wrote, every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. 